Stephen Jill here. Hi. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about the topic, infill lots explained. How do you make that? I'm trying <laughs> to think about how can I make the, um, a funny topic out of this, and you really kind of can. I'm trying to think about that, like too. Like a little more entertaining. It's exactly the same thought I just had. So the three of you that are listening, because you saw the title... <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Everybody else said pass. Everybody and else the next like, show. I hope they're entertaining again. Yeah. What the heck? Or a few of them are like, let's just watch these guys fail. It's like yeah, watching a car go. accident. This is good, like a car accident. <laughs> Look at these two clowns trying to yeah. <laughs> trying to make infill lots entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> entertaining real estate investing top talk except for today just kidding <laughs> before we get into it let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community it's free ben shares i have two adjoining parcels under contract in virginia one is owned by my contact the other he owns 75 percent of the other 25 percent does not have uh, clear ownership his dad is last in the listed owner, but he died after he divorced and remarried. Oh boy, this is gonna be a good one. The lady he married died several years ago and no one has any clue who her heirs are, if any. I have talked to the contact several times and re and he really doesn't know. Apparently, he didn't really know, much, really know his stepmom, yeah. much less her heirs. Title insurance won't insure yeah. without, and at this point I'm stuck. My title company isn't offering any ideas. Surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. But it seems like the scenario has come up sometimes. What ways are there to deal with this, if any? Here are the numbers. The deal is 87 acres, purchase price of $60,000. And we're looking at doubling our money on the flip. So it's worth putting in the effort. Oh, you wrote in it. Did you write this answer in the I, thing or just I now? I paraphrased... Uh... Well, let's just say uh, Kevin and I had the same opinion. Oh, all right. Kevin, the moderator. Right. So here's Stephen's answer. Benjamin, you should call an attorney. They will need to do a quiet title suit. Yeah. It will probably cost two to three thousand dollars and takes three months. Six months. Six months. That will clear all of the possible errors and give you a clear title. That's worth it, man. For let me think. Spend two or three thousand dollars. Wait three months to make sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, I'd do that. So would I. Okay. Uh, this is a great situation you found yourself in because even if somebody did get get there before you, they probably walked away because it's just too much work. Quite, it's not too much work for us. It's okay. not too much work for the people in Land Academy at all. Quiet title actions are something that Jill and I go through all the time, and it is very, very, very prosperous mm -hmm. and confuses everybody for some reason. When in fact, it's just a checklist. Uh, just like you check off a bunch of stuff before you fly an airplane. It's as simple as that. It just takes longer. And so the good news here is that the first property that you buy is going to pay for the second property. Mm -hmm. So if I understand your numbers right, you're going to buy a prop. There's two properties sitting next to each other. You're going to buy one, the first one, no problem, 60000 bucks. sell it for one hundred and twenty. Now you have $60,000 to buy the second one uh, and do the quiet title action, and you don't have to front the money at all. You just have to sign an agreement that says, look, we're going to go through this quiet title action. Uh, here's uh, $500 or $1,000 down payment toward the property. Mm -hmm. And let's move forward on it. I mean, that's how it happens out west. Virginia may or may not be uh, slightly different, but they're all a different version of the same thing. So this is not a problem. No. This is a, a lemonade out of lemon situation. That, and you're going to walk away with $120,000 inside of six months. It's better than winning a lottery. You know what's great too? That's the whole point. You're paying a little money for this attorney. He's doing the work. Yeah. You're just kind of sit back and and I would be in constant contact, obviously, and checking on him, but he's doing the work for you. And here's what I'd like you to do too throughout this whole process is really microscopically look at how they go through this uh, judicial foreclosure action because that's technically what it is. Well, hopefully in Virginia it is. Uh, it is in Arizona, California. So, and because you're going to, if this works and you're staring at all this money, you can actively seek out problems with title right. pro issues like this, and they're not hard to find. Do you know what's funny? People don't realize that there's there are scenarios of things that once you learn the steps, you don't have to be an attorney to do them. You only have to follow the exact steps. Things have to be recorded and documented with the county a certain way, certain forms, certain time limits. 
and you just have to follow it to the letter and then you can do it too. Yeah. This is a good situation to be in. I'm a little bit jealous. Joe yeah. and I have done a lot of pro- uh, transactions in Virginia late in the last six to eight months for some reason through deal funding. Mm-hmm. And uh, they couldn't have gone better. Right. You know, and they sell some fast. Of money. Yeah. There's a, uh, a huge, there's a lust for Virginia property for some reason. Yep. Today's topic, infill lots explained. This is the meat of the show. You know, just to piggyback on that, I was reading something the other day and I want to say that D.C. is uh, one of the top growing cities. I've heard that through the grapevine socially and I've heard that now from many channels. D.C. used to be a rust belt yeah, ghetto. Exactly. And uh, apparently it's just all turned around and, and you know, right. for the better. So everybody wins. Everybody wins. Yeah. When a, a fallen neighborhood gets turned around like that, mm-hmm. I think. I agree. Okay, so day... Today's topic, Info Lots Explained. This is the meat of the show. I already did that. Oh, sorry. I, <laughs> I got you sidetracked. She reads my lines. Isn't that funny? It says right there. I thought you forgot because it's not there. <laughs> so let me back up here. So if, if it's okay with you, I would like to interview you and ask you. So let's see. This. I have three questions, and I think it'll cover this. Number one, what are Info Lots? Info Lots are property that is buildable or usable in a, this is my definition, in a similar man, manner to the properties that are immediately in its surrounding. So if you have a it's picture a vacant lot that's between two houses that just never got developed, that's an info lot. Picture uh, two vacant properties in an industrial park where there's uh, properties that have been developed all around it and they're just kind of sitting there, usually with a sign in front of them saying for sale, build the suit. That's an info lot. Question number two, what makes them great? What makes them great is that you find them in non-master plan communities or uh, planned urban developments, depending on what part of the country and those two phrases are synonymous. What makes them great is that they're just kind of forgotten and left over. And so you can take a property, you usually apply the stuff that goes on with Land Academy and buy it very, very inexpensively. And now you're completely in the driver's seat. You've got a property that you paid hopefully half of what it's worth right now. You can either resell it to a developer or you can develop it yourself if you're if you're a home builder. And you get three or four of these in a row within a strong market conditions and stuff, you're, you're going to make a bunch of dough. We just uh, turned a deal down that we would have made because we didn't want to go through the hassle. We would have made $1.2 million on in, uh, it wasn't Eureka, where was it? Just south of Santa Barbara. So these are not, make like in the question, that person's going to make hundred grand, which is nothing to shake a stick at. These are, in a lot of times, multi-million dollar opportunities. You know what I think is great about them? From the on the sales side, it's very clear to see what's possible because you have, you know, you might have a Denny's on one side and a you know Dairy Queen on the other, whatever it is. So your buyer can envision what should be right there. You know, hopefully they have a dry cleaner or some something. You know, whatever they want, it's perfect. This is Another, easy or a McDonald's. Easy and fun when you're interviewing. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right. So then, my third question is, and this is this is we talk about these often on our member calls. What are the things that I should look for, really check out when buying an info lot, so I know it's a good one? Excellent. So let me give you an example of stuff that I've been through. In the past, I've sent mailers out to, let's say, a place like Mesa, Arizona, where there's tons and tons of residential real estate, and I look up the data set and. I successfully download all the properties that don't have any structure on them. And now I'm staring there, staring at a data set that's got just land in an urban, urban, urban area like Mesa, Arizona. And so I send the mail out. Let's say I go crazy and I just say, you know what? I'm going to send out all these mailers for $3,500 each. I'm going to shotgun approach this, which sometimes you do. Right. Not rifle it. Right. And a certain number come back. Let's say 10 or 15 come back. This is actually a real story. 10 or 15 or 20 come back. Of those 10 or 15 or 20, there's only going to be a few that I'm going to buy. Why? That's really what you're asking me, right? Right. Because the other ones aren't usable in a manner that I think is, uh, that works. Please explain if you don't mind. Meaning. Okay. They might be in a floodplain. They might be too small for the zoning. Mm. There, there's a lot of look again, a little checklist that we go through that, that after you talk to or talk to Mesa, the, the community, the, the government, and say, what is it? To, is this property buildable? And, oh no, it isn't because it's uh, slightly smaller than the, what it's zoned for, which is one acre in that area. 
or no, it's not. It's just a, it's an easement. Actually, it's got an, it's APN, but it's just an easement. So I'm not overcomplicating this. This is actually pretty simple. Once you get in there and talk to the, and find out what's going on, what you're looking for are the properties that are completely buildable mm -hmm. in their current state without any kind of zoning change. One last uh, comment that I have that I would love for you to share a little more on. So, like if I was new and I'm not that, not that uh, into it, I'm not well, not that into it, but I'm not that far into it. I'm not sure exactly what to ask or what not to ask. I could probably get something, an info report from inforeport.com. Will you explain a little bit about that? Yeah. So Jill and I started a company called inforeports.com or inforeport.com with a uh, an employee, uh, his name is Mike, uh, Mike Marshall, and he's a member too, but he's an employee of uh, of Los Angeles County, incredibly bright. Actually, he's going to speak at our live event in October. Okay. And you can order a report that says, answers all those questions. Mm -hmm. And it's current, it's current state, can I build on this? Or does it need something to change? And it's in color, it's number coded. Right. You know, if you get it all threes, you're good to go. If you get a couple of twos and all threes, probably just need some paper type changes and that's it. But you get some ones in there, that might mean uh, you got to change zoning, which is tough. Right. Uh, or you have it's in a floodplain, which is tough. You know, there's a lot of drainage type properties in urban scenarios that, for whatever reason, have been assigned APNs long, long ago, and they're just yes. not usable how we want to use them. Right. That's not to say they're not usable. And let me be real clear about this: out here sure. in California, every time you see property that which is technically probably an easement, but property under these massive power lines, there's a nursery. Yeah, it's funny. Isn't that they crazy? They figured it out. They figured it out. You and I would, you know, like, you can't put a house there. You certainly can't put a hospital there. You can't. But you, you can, can grow trees there, there. But you can put a nice little nursery and shrubs, there and you can, flowers. You can sell gra landscape sure. gravel. Exactly. It's really so funny. So just because it's, you know, on paper, it's like, wow, that's just an easement. Oh, no, you it. can use it. Sure. There's lots of uses. There's all for kinds of stuff to go Exactly. That can go Get on. creative. Wow, I love it. Thank you. Info lots are awesome. I really like. We them. have made a trip in a in we've did a whole pro a separate program that is included with Land Academy called Land Academy 2.0 Info lots, mm -hmm. and I separate separated separate out and all the concepts about how to identify markets where your mailer is going to work through red green yellow testing and zip bringing it down to zip codes, and how to as a percentage. If a house is selling for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you know, an info lot or developer is usually willing to pay about twenty percent of that. Which so you should be willing to pay about ten percent, mm -hmm. and on and on and on. I don't want to get on it be all complicated about this right here, but info lots rock. Exactly, and they're hugely profitable. I agree. Thanks. That's the end of my is that, questions. Is that explained? That's info it. Lots explained. I think you did it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we know your time's valuable. Thanks for spending some of it with us today. Join us in the next episode called Member Bei Zhang Shares House Academy Success Stories with Jill. Yep. And we answer your questions, post on our online community, found at landinvestors.com. It is free. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. We didn't talk about dating or girls or anything this time. Is that okay? Are you okay? It's not as fun for me. Oh, okay. How about you? <laughs> Sometimes it's... Sometimes it, I could use a little break. <laughs> wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, please subscribe and rate us there. We, we are, are Steve and Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property.